What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp woodworking tutorial for you. So it's been a while since we've done a woodworking tutorial and I'd like to do some projects having to do with woodworking moving forward. Um, so if you have any ideas for anything having to do with woodworking, uh, leave a comment down below and let me know. But in this case, we're going to model out if we're going to model out a folding table that might be something that you might have inside of your workshop or something like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the table that we're going to model is going to look something like this. So it's basically going to be a table that hooks up to the wall and then rotates down. So it's going to have holes cut in it with legs, other things like that. So we're going to kind of go step by step through this so you can see how we would model this to scale in order to be able to actually use it in real life to build something. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to model the board that goes on the wall. And so for simplicity's sake, let's just put this at like 42 inches above the floor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tape measure tool to create a guide. So I'm going to click on the tape measure tool. Notice how there's a little plus button next to my mouse cursor, a um, little dotted line to plus button. That means I'm in create guide mode. If you don't see that, tap the control key in order to turn create guide mode on. And then I'm just going to mouse over this line, single click, and then I'm going to move my mouse up. Notice that I single clicked. I'm not clicking and dragging. And I'm just going to type in a value of 42 and hit the enter key. So that is going to act as a guide on our wall. So now let's go ahead and let's draw our two by four. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to rough out a shape just by drawing a line using the line tool. So just tap L and then move your mouse along here and wherever you wanna start this, just go ahead and click and move your mouse and type in a value of 48 inches. So just type in 48 and hit the enter key. And then we're gonna assume that this board is going to be a two by four for right now. So we're just gonna draw a line down and we're gonna draw that down three and a half inches. So we're just gonna type in 3.5 and hit the enter key. Make sure that your mouse is along the blue axis right here when you do this so that this is perfectly aligned with your wall. But then once you've done this, you can just use the rectangle tool, just tap the R key and then single click and single click again in order to draw the profile of our board. Notice you're getting this flashing in here. That's okay. That's just indicating that your board is occupying the same space as this wall. Um, but as soon as we extrude this out, this won't be a big deal. So we're just gonna activate the push pull tool by tapping the P key. And we're just gonna single click, move our mouse this direction and then type in 1.5. So that's gonna give us a thickness of one and a half inches. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take this whole thing, I just wanna right click on it and I wanna make it a component. So I'm just dragging a selection box across it, right clicking and making it a component. The reason I'm making it a component is because I wanna be able to name this component. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna name this two by four dash 48 inch long. And you can add more information in here as well. So you could call this like wall piece or something like that. But basically the reason I wanna do that is because then if I look inside of my outliner, which you can find over here on the right hand side of the page on the desktop version, you can see how this shows up and I can see the name of this piece. Well now I wanna come in here and I wanna start modeling some more things. So, and you can kind of decide for yourself if you want to model this in the down position or the up position, I'm going to model it in the down position. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw the profile of my plywood board. So I'm assuming this is going to have a depth of, we'll call it, let's call it 30 inches. So I'm just going to type in a value of 30 and then I'm just going to draw a rectangle from this corner to this corner. And then I can extrude that up the thickness of the plywood I want to use. So in this case, I'm going to say that this is going to be three quarter inch plywood. That might be a little thick for what we're doing here, but that's what I want to do for right now. So I push pulled this so that it had the right thickness. Then I'm just going to take that. I'm going to make sure that I only have this board selected. So I'm going to do a shift click to deselect this. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to make this a component. And in this case, we're going to call this three quarter inch plywood, 30 inches by 
48 inches. And you don't have to keep things this organized, but I like to just because I can see information about the dimensions that I have in here. Now, if you're going to change these, maybe don't put the dimensions in here, but maybe do put the type of material that you're using. That's kind of up to you and your organizational structure. But now what I want to do is I want to model out the frame. So I'm assuming right now that I'm going to have a board that runs all the way along the length on the front here. So I'm just going to draw the profile of a board. So this is going to be an inch and a half wide. And then I'm just going to come back in here and I've closed this in. Well, then I can extrude this 3.5 inches and hit the enter key. And then I'm just going to triple click on this to select the whole thing. Right click and I'm going to make it a component. And we'll just call it two by four, 48 inch long front piece like this. Now let's model out our boards that are going to make up our supports right here. So the way that we're going to do that is first off, we're going to have two end pieces, right? So we're going to have an end piece that runs down here. So I'm just going to draw the profile for that. And then I'm going to extrude this across like this using the push pull tool. So there's multiple different ways that you could create this. And so for now, let's just take this right click on it and make it a component and we'll just call this two by four table supports and hit the enter key we'll come back to that in a second but for right now what i want to do is i want to model out another one of these and we're going to make the legs with it and so now we're going to model out our legs and so our legs are going to go from here down to the ground Right, so let's go ahead and let's model this piece in place. So I'm just gonna draw a profile. So in this case, it's gonna be three and a half inches this way, so 3.5. And then for this one, we're just gonna draw the line all the way to the ground. So I'm just going to inference to the blue axis. So just move your mouse till this turns blue and then hold the shift key and move your mouse right here. And then we can use the rectangle tool in order to just draw a rectangle right here. And we can go ahead and push pull this to a thickness of one and a half inches. And we're just gonna triple click to select the whole thing, right click, and we'll just make it a component. And we're just gonna call this two by four table leg. And so one thing that we need to do with this is we need to round this off right? Because this is going to need to be able to rotate when this table gets pulled up. So, and so in order to do that, we're assuming that we're going to want to round this whole thing off. Well, we know that the width of our two by four is three and a half inches. And so we know this has a width of three and a half inches. Well, it's going to have a radius of three and a half divided by two, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a guide down 1.75 inches. So we're just going to draw a guide right here, type in a value of 1.75 and hit the enter key. Well, then we can use the arc tool by tapping the A key. So tap A, then mouse over this, and we're going to click on this point and this point, and we're just going to move our mouse up right here. So what we've done is we've split this up where we can now remove this material. So we're just going to tap the P key. And then we're going to single click on this and we're going to move it to the back right here and we're going to click and this material is going to go away and then we're going to do the same thing over here so when i click notice how this material is now gone and we're in good shape for creating our leg and so while we're in here while we're inside of the group i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to draw a circle aligned with this edge right here, this is gonna be my circle that my bolt's gonna go through. And we'll go ahead and say that we're gonna have maybe like a 3 8 inch bolt or something like that. And then we can erase out this object right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push pull this through. And I'm gonna make sure that I click on the back line right here, that's gonna cut a hole in my object. So now what we can do is we can start copying our legs. So one other, one other thing we might want to think about doing is we might want to go ahead and cut our hole in the end piece right here. So to do that, 
what I'm gonna do, because I can't see the circle in here right now, right? And you could make this really complicated. You could try to like move this away and then draw a line through the middle and all of that. You could definitely do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna toggle into X-ray mode for a second. So there's a button right here called X-ray. And what X-ray is gonna do is that's gonna let me see through my objects. Well, notice what this is gonna let me do is this is gonna let me inference through this object or it's gonna let me use this object over here as an inference point. So notice how now I'm in here and I'm editing this object, but I can see through this object to the center of this hole. Well, then I could just move my mouse over the center of this hole and just draw a circle inside of this object, right? So that's gonna create a face in here. Well, then you can just take that by rotating around, push pull it and extrude it to the back of this object in order to cut your hole. Well, Now, if you look at this, I have a hole that I've cut in my board. So now my hole is in exactly the place that I want it to be. So now I'm gonna click out of this group. So now I'm back into SketchUp and I wanna start making some copies because now I have all of the parts and pieces that I need. So I don't know if you know about moving, using the move tool in copy mode, but the move tool has a mode built in where you can create copies using that tool. So the way that works is let's select our table support right here. Well, now I can just tap the M key to activate the move tool. Well, notice how when I move my mouse around, I'm currently getting a little move tool cursor. Well, if I tap the control key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna put me into copy mode. What copy mode's gonna let me do is instead of moving something, so if I tap control to turn that off, it's gonna move this original object. So you can tap control before you set this base point or after, um, just tap the control key to go into copy mode. But I'm just gonna move my mouse over here and I'm gonna click again in order to create the copy of my leg. Well, the cool thing about this is if you look over in your outliner, this is a copy or this is a copy of this object and that shows up in here. So I can see right now that I have two table support legs. Well, now what we can do is we can just select, shift click and shift click, and then use the move tool in copy mode again by tapping the M key and then tapping control. Then I can just single click and I can move my mouse over here like this. So now I have my two ends. And then let's say that we wanted to make another copy for a third leg in the middle. Well, we can find our midpoint just by mousing over this and finding the inference point that says midpoint. And so this is a little bit tricky, right? Because there's no midpoint right here on this object. But what we can do is we can just select a point on the middle of our leg down here and single click and then move our mouse so we're moving along the red axis. Well, if I hold the shift key to lock this inference and then I move my mouse up, I can find the midpoint right here. So when I find that midpoint, I can just click again. And so what that's allowed me to do is that's allowed me to make a copy that's aligned with the middle of this object. So now I have a table in here that has three legs. It has a top, and then it has the wall piece right here. And so let's say that we wanted to model this folded up. So there's not a super great way inside of SketchUp to save that state. So probably what I would do is I would just create another copy of this. So I would just take this whole thing. I would use the move tool in copy mode over here and I would just create a copy. Well, then I can come in here and I can just rotate these objects. So for example, I could come in here and I could rotate my plywood up 90 degrees. I could also take these wood pieces and I would probably actually select all of this. So I'm gonna take all of these not including the wall piece. I'm just gonna rotate these up 90 degrees as well. So you can see I rotated these up. Then I would take these three objects and I would rotate them using the move tool down centered on this point. So I would tap the Q key. I would mouse over this and then I would just find the central point and I would tap the, the right arrow key to lock this inference to the red axis. Well then I can just rotate these down 90 degrees. And I guess one thing I didn't do that I probably could have done is I could have modeled out some bolt heads in here 
as well. So for example, the way that we would want this to work is we would want this to have some bolts in here, right? So all I would do in order to do that, because you don't want to get too detailed with your bolts, um, there's just really no point to that. And so the way that I would do this is I would just activate the circle tool right here, mouse over this edge in order to find this central point, and then I would tap the right arrow key to lock this to this point. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to draw a circle which I can then push pull in here through this hole. And I'm not gonna get too detailed with this right now. Um, so you would obviously have to measure how long your bolts would need to be, and then also put a nut on the end of it. But for what we're doing right here, we're more visually indicating this, right? And so I've got one piece of this bolt, but then now let's model the head. So to model the head, you can just tap the C key and notice how in the lower right hand corner, there's an option for number of sides. Well, I'm gonna assume this is a hex head bolt, meaning it's gonna have six sides on it. So I'm just gonna type in a value of six and hit the enter key. When I hit the enter key, notice how that's gonna give me the option to model a hex head like this. So I'm just gonna move my mouse out and click and that's allowed me to model out this head. Well then I can just push pull this out like this and I'm going to go ahead and erase out the circle on this face. And what that did is that allowed me to model this bolt. Well, then we'll just go into x-ray mode. We'll just select it. We'll right click and we'll make it a component. And we'll just call it bolt. And then you could use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy this to use it multiple times. So in this case, I would use the move tool in copy mode. I would move it once so that it aligns with this face. Then I'd move it again over here. So it aligns with this face, but for this one, I would tap the S key to go into scale mode, hold the control key, and then single click, move my mouse so this is scaled to negative one, and click again. So really what I did is I used the scale tool to flip this in place. Then you could come back in and realign this if it wasn't aligned the way that you wanted it to be. So you can model out the bolts that way. Um, I would recommend not spending too much time on your bolts and your fasteners. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could copy these over to this one as well. So now what you have is you have an image of this table that's extended and you have an image of this table that's folded up. There's some other things we could do with like layering if you wanted to like toggle them on and off in the same place, but I'm not going to worry about that too much for right now. If you're interested in that, leave a comment down below and I can make a video on that. But then you could come in here and add materials or really do whatever you wanted to in order to close off or finish this model. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Is this something you'd like to see me continue further? Would you like to see more woodworking projects? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.